in this episode. Milton's making a new paddock, which turns into something else. Holy, have a look at that out there, look. Look at that. What have we created here? Well, never since our old place. The hot-headed cook returns, and he's not happy. Things aren't the same place where it was when I left. That's not true. Why? That's not true. And Milton takes a long journey to remember a fallen mate. We'll do that for him, mate. It's the least we can do. It's another picture-perfect morning at Cooley Bar. Oh, 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 oh. Earn your money this one, Will. But today, there's no muster, Ending. which means a few folks are playing up. For the backpackers, it's a first-hand look at the life teenagers Bo and Alex are used to. It's a new thing I didn't know you could uh, raid cattle. <laughs> This must be just, yeah, spare time fun, I reckon. You're on, you got it! Yeah. <laughs> Are you going to get on one or one? No way. <laughs> For the Jones gang, it's precious free time. Some are using it to train. It's just trying to get everything correct. And in the camp drafting, it's those differences that get you more points. Others are catching up on a few odd jobs. Cars had the rollover. We're just trying to knock the windscreen out and get the forks in here. We'll just straighten the roof up a bit. At least I've still got a bit of shade. Job is done. Happy customer. Just sounds like any other day at Cool About, to be honest. Yeah. A few k's away, someone's having a fun day at the office. <laughs> After fire destroyed his best paddock, Milton's making a new one. We get a permit from the government to change some of this timber. You got a big chain between two dozers, and we pull it. It knocks the trees down. The land's clear. Now Milton has to get rid of the debris. And there's only one way to do it. She's going to be hot here in a minute. burn down. By morning it'll be all gone. Anyway, we'll get going and light the whole lot up. But even on a still day, there's still a chance the fire could spread. How's it that side, Jeff? Yeah, all good over here. So the Cooley Bar Fire Department's on hand. Five in there. <laughs> Just got the water tank on the back, the same one that we used last time there was a fire out there. And yeah, hopefully we won't have to use it. There may not be a lot of wind about, but that's not stopping Rainy and Little Milton from trying to fly a kite. Right, have you checked the wind, sir? The wind is blowing nowhere. Oh, hold it up. First launch is a bust. Maybe a little bit more string. The others aren't much better. Oh, not again. <laughs> but then the girl from next door has a brainwave. I think we should try another way. No wind, just make some. Just keep driving around and around the fire, right? Yep. Over in the new paddock, Milton's fires are happily burning away. And it's then, when everything seems under control, that things get weird. Holy, have a look at that out there, look. You look at that. Spout, look at the tail of it. Jesus, that'd be hot. Look how high it is. What do 
we created here. Check the other side. Back around the other side of the paddock. Jump down around there now. Right on. It's a bit scary. <laughs> That's what you call a proper dust devil. Just in between the heat, see? In between those three fires there, and it's just sitting there. The fires caused a vacuum that's blown up into a mini tornado. Around here, we call it a dust devil. I've never seen anything like that before. <laughs> it's good to see Cooley Bar still has some surprises. Really spectacular. Yeah, it looks good. Nature's a funny thing, isn't it? And just like that, it's gone. Hello. Good, how are you? It was an interesting twist on Milton's morning. Yeah. But unfortunately, the day's about to take a darker turn. OK, bye. That was his hospital, and it's not good. After a long illness, a close friend of the Joneses has passed away. Poor thing. Richard Allen Buckley, his name was, yeah. I met him about, oh, 30 years ago, I suppose. He built a lot of these roads along here everywhere. Pushed the gravel for them, and 15 or 18 years, I suppose, he worked for me. Good old fella. Good with kids. And... Very tough man. Thought he was a tough bugger. Buckley's funeral will be held in Darwin in a few days. It'll be a sad wait till then. Another one bites the dust. At Cooley Bar, it's lunchtime, which means a kip for some. The kitchen's alive, though, thanks to Katie and Caroline. <laughs> and the stereo they've taken from Trevor's room. It's a happy place, the kitchen. It's great. Look forward to going in there and... Yeah, there was music playing in there last night, which I never thought would have happened. But the real question is, what's going to happen when Trev gets back? I don't want to talk about Trevor too much. I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> yeah, he's got a temper, but, I mean, he's got certain expectations with his kitchen, I guess, too, and if they're not upheld, I guess he gets annoyed. <laughs> right now, the girls couldn't care less. <laughs> They're on a sightseeing tour of Cooley Bar. <laughs> After some tough weeks here, the girls are about to find a reason to stay. Oh my God, well, just look at this. Have you ever seen anything like that in your life? This is like our lunch break. So. <laughs> yeah. This is what we do. You're never going to be somewhere like this again. Never. And apparently people you know, we'd pay a lot of good money to come to see, to see this. this kind of thing. And yeah, I can see why, because it's amazing. Still, there's a famous site the girls haven't seen. And he's heading home. Oh, well, I'm the station cook, and I'm um, coming back. It's good, give me a good kick up the arse and say, get out of here. <laughs> you don't live here. <laughs> yep, classic Trevor. Back at the station, someone else is coming home. Yes. What's happening, cowboy? After the news of his friend's passing, Milton's returned from Buckley's funeral in Darwin. No, oh, it's a little mean. It makes you think, you know. Be good to spend a bit of time with my family and me. Yeah. But Milton will soon be off again, because he has a promise to keep to his old friend. This is old Buckley here. There's his hat. There he is there, the old fella. Knock a bit of dust off him. That's who we've got to take down to the Lemon River. We'll spread his ashes. he make me do that last bit of work, I reckon, that old fella, eh? He put it in his will that he wanted his ashes spread over the Lemon there. 
They used to spend a lot of time down there fishing. It's a big water hole there. We'll do that for him, mate. It's the least we can do. But before Milton sets off, he has a job to do. Right and he's brought the kids to help. Oh, well, this is all old Buckley's gear here. All his life's possessions, what do you do with them? When Buckley left Cooley Bar, he asked oh, Milton to look muscle. after his things. That looks like Buckley, that hat too, doesn't it? But the old fella never came back for them. All his old cards, Christmas, eh? Lived there on his own. Oh, yeah, it's not a good job, is it? It's just got to be done. Someone's got to do it. He used to play this. He never had any wind to blow it, though. He only had, had half a lung, eh, poor old fella? Oh, there's me. Geez, that's going back a bit, isn't it? Then <laughs> there's old Rick there, look, ready to abuse somebody. No matter how you cut it, it's a tough time for old Milton. What's all those books here, Wags? The poem about Buckley. Oh. <laughs> oh, we'll have to read that. <clears throat> Come on. The party had assembled. They were loaded up for fun near the mouth of the Roper River at landing number one. So let me tell you about a place where you should never be, anywhere aboard a boat in company with Buckley. On the... <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that's a good one. It's a ripper. Bit of an old character, eh? Come on. Catch up. Well, I've seen him jump out of a Toyota once doing probably 60k an hour on the airstrip. Silly old bugger. But yeah, he's right, he's dead and gone now. Right, oh. Put Buckley in the box. Let's go. Well, it's a four and a half hour flight and a 44 down to the lemon. Long way down there. Yeah, that's where he wanted to be buried. I always told him I was going to throw him out of the helicopter onto a crocodile, so I think that's why he lived for so long. He refused to die. Over at Cooley Bar, the backpackers don't have a care in the world. But that's all about to change. Trevor's back, and the girls have forgotten something which could get them in trouble. Yeah, now I'm going to go and actually try and move the stereo. And apparently, it can be quite grumpy. And yeah, we've, we've got his property <laughs> that we shouldn't have. Oh, don't think he's going to be happy about that. Maybe I'll just put it back out. Hiding it, I think, is maybe worse. <sighs> don't know what to do. So while Trevor's distracted, where is he? Caroline's on a mission. Right, it's going over that way. Have I got time to run through with this? Put it back in the screen. <laughs> don't know if you saw or not. I heard shouting. Hopefully that wasn't it. But yeah, nice one. The stereo's back. Well, that's one thing Trev can't get grumpy about. But then he sees the kitchen. Things aren't the same place where I was when I left. There's a jacket lying around. A broom hanging around. Well, there's all over the place. Look at the fucking stuff up there. Seems Trev will have plenty to say when he meets the girls. I wonder if he'll remember to say hello. There I was when I left it. That's not true. Why? That's not true. Well, the dishes weren't sitting on that bench when I came in, when the I left dishes. it. Come and show me. Everything's got to be up there. Well, we just put the them out the so that the guys don't have to walk over there. But that'll have to be easy. The guys are what? So the guys don't have to walk over there to pick up their plates for lunch. Let them so. walk. Let <laughs> them work. <laughs> they can't be too soft with them. Where are you? So, yeah, I think just marginally territorial. Yeah, no, completely. And looking at them, yeah, I reckon. Small man syndrome. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> What's that? I'll be taking over in one. Cool, and we're very happy about that. That's good. But yeah, we deliberately didn't move loads of stuff about, we just cleaned. Oh. The only thing is the plates and the cups. Welcome back, Trev.
just headed down there to the lemon block down here. There's old Buckley, this old stamping ground, all this country. To the far east of Coolibar, Milton and Buckley are nearing the Lemon River. He used to have a boat and fish it. When he died, that's where he wanted to be bloody buried or spread his ashes, so that's where we're heading right now. The old bass is making us travel a long way, I can tell you. And the geldings are boys. They are. What are the girls called? Me. That's right. Back at Cooley Bar, Little Milton's also about to experience the circle of life. Come on, I'm showing you something. And learn respect for those who came before him. The one's head's left there. It is, isn't it? They bury themselves. It's a human skull and there's some other bones in there as well. Have you seen that before? Yes. Have you? Who showed you? Dad. They used to live here at the Billabong and up in the hills. Because there's paintings up in the hills. Yeah, they were here before you were here, and they're still here now. Yeah. He was a good man. Speaking of good men, Milton almost has Buckley home. I'm sure there'll be a fair few of his old mates here, so I'll say good day to everyone and chug him in the water and come home. This is it, we're here. This is where old Buckley Dash is gonna go. Deep in the territory, Milton's touched down on the banks of the Lemon River. Oh, Freddy's here. What's going on? No, he's still sealed up. He's right, he's in there. He's there, he's gonna have a drink with us. From all over, Buckley's friends have come to say goodbye. Oh, you're getting bigger by the day. <laughs> Freddie and Teddy and Steve Barrett and his brother-in-law and a few other fellas. Susie Stanley, a good mate of his, she used to look after him a lot, so that was good. That's because he used to love flowers. Yeah, he, he used did to too, pick didn't flowers he? all the time, like a little kid. They're all here for one man. And it's time to get him home. They started drinking beer as soon as they woke up. <laughs> so I thought I'd better get these ashes out and get out of here pretty quick. And as Buckley takes his last journey. An unknown poet wrote this about him. The party had assembled. They were loaded up for fun. Near the mouth of the Roper River. At landing number one. A good old bloke, Mohammed in company with me, and another bloke we all knew well. A bloke called Rick Buckley. That's it, she's all done and dusted, mate. He's gone, he's gone the river, hasn't he, eh? He's finished. Yes, every time he come to town, he'd flog everybody's flowers and give you a little bugger. Yeah, see you, Buckley, old prick. He'd be right. He's a good spot there. Big river. And about the Carpenter Gulf, there's a tale they seldom tell. About a bloke that rode a dugong and rode him rather well. And if Buckley ever finally dies, he might even go to heaven. The old man didn't eat the dugong. He just sat on six or seven. Oh, he won't go to heaven. He'll definitely go to hell. <laughs> definitely.